hey, please listen. If you're sick and tired of the lies from the governments and things of that sort, you know, as I am, then you're in for a rather rude awakening, my friends, because what's taught out there in the religious organizations today that read the scriptures, that is, not speaking of Buddhists or those of that sort, that category, in the religious organizations, However, there's this widespread deception, my friends, concerning righteousness and this teaching out there that is totally devastating to the soul, wherein many deceived religious leaders, as Revelation 12 verse 9 points out, the whole world is deceived, and what they're teaching you are deceptions concerning the saying, or that which is actually written. There is none righteous, no, not one. However, these imposters, these messengers that come as Satan the devil, who is a messenger as of the light, and they want you to think that you cannot become righteous. Because it says, oh, none is righteous, no, not one. They take that one little snippet out of what was actually written, and they base this whole new religion of the world upon it. And thus, Revelation 12, 9 is true. So hopefully we'll get through this quickly. I hope that you've listened to the other videos that have been posted recently. We discuss Revelation 12, 9 in detail. We show Revelation chapter 9, where these critters will be released from the bottomless pit. And they're going to be stinging all those who do not have the mark, the seal of our Heavenly Father on their foreheads. The same religious organizations want to speak against me and my other 143,999 brothers that are scattered to the farthest parts of the earth and to the farthest parts of heaven, saying, oh, well, you're not a virgin. You got seven children. How can you be a virgin? You can't be one of the 144,000. That's for sure. And these same people are out there preaching to everyone they can, hoping they will get them baptized so that that old man will go down the watery grave, bringing forth a new creation. And if you're a new creation after baptism, shouldn't you also be a virgin, my friends, no longer whoring after the gods of the lands, the Canaanites, the Phoenicians, that the world whores after today? Well, these things and many more were discussed in the more recent videos. I'm pulling the cover off the sins, my friends, and if you can handle it, please do watch. If you can't handle the truth, my friends, there's other videos out there for people. Millions and millions of videos that you can go out there and have your little ears itched and tickled. Make your hearts feel good with the imposter of the Holy Spirit in you. And I mean no offense when I say so, but it's been proven. I ask you to prove what I speak wrong. Use the scripture, show me where I'm wrong, and I will bring a video out just like I had recently, showing where I had been wrong for almost, give or take, 40 years, but I repented. And I'm not afraid to say where I've fallen short. In some of those areas, I won't tell anybody. It's between me and my king, and I was totally a horrible person before I was called out. However, let's take a journey into what the scriptures actually say about righteousness. And the question is, can you, as a religious person, or even a non-religious person, become righteous even though it's written? There is none righteous, no, not one. Now first, let us prove all things as we are all commanded. Here you can see in the word search bar, I put in righteous. And it came out with 262 times, it shows, and 248 verses in the New King James Perversion. You can check in the King James Perversion as well, where it shows 238 times and 225 verses. But I choose the New King James Perversion as to the ease of reading. And you can see here, my friends, under Righteous, which, as I've been led to bring out many times, is also Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. It shall be righteousness for you, for me, for all of us, if we keep his commandments. 
That's what righteousness is. And here you can see in Genesis 7, 1, Then the father said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household. Why? Because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. So Noah was known as being righteous. Here you have Father Abraham in Genesis 18, 23. And Abraham came near and said to our Heavenly Father, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now this is speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah having a little fire shower come down, being prophesied to come shortly. And Father Abraham had allowed Lot to go into that land. And my friends, this is a terrible, horrible, sad story for Father Abraham to see that his nephew Lot took many, 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 many servants with him into those lands. He was supposed to watch over those people, souls, keep them in the righteous ways, but they all were deceived and left him. And Father Abraham saying, would you also destroy the righteous, assuming that Lot had been a righteous shepherd over the sheep? It's not Lot's fault they fell away. You can't keep anybody from doing their own desires. Father Abraham couldn't save anybody. Noah cannot save anybody. Even if a man came back from the dead. He cannot save anybody. You have to save your own souls, my friends. And then again here in Genesis 18, 24, Father Abraham is saying, Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? So here you can see that there were at least 50 others with Father Abraham when Lot was with him, that were righteous. Otherwise, Abraham wouldn't be asking to spare any of them in his asking for the righteous to be spared. And it keeps going down where the numbers kept dwindling. And here, Genesis 20, verse 4, But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Ruler, will you slay a righteous nation? Also, we'll just skip down a few here. Deuteronomy 4, 8. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law, which I have set before you this day? Hopefully you can already see, my friends, that there are righteous men. But they only became righteous because they kept our Father's laws, His commandments. And that the teachings out there and the deceived religious organizations of today that are held captive under Revelation 12, 9, they're all deceived and they're trying to make the people think that you'll make the kingdom if you sin. The opposite of being righteous is to be lawless. It's to be sinful and evil. Here in 1 Samuel 24, 7. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with righteousness, with righteous deeds, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. 2 Samuel 4, verse 11. How much more when the wicked men have killed a righteous person in his own house or on his bed. Therefore shall I not now require his blood at your hand and remove you from the earth? First Kings 8, 32, then here in heaven and act and judge your servants, condemning the wicked, bringing his way on his own head and justifying the righteous by giving the righteous according to their righteousness. And please, on your own, go through here and check out how many times this righteous is speaking of men. Look up righteousness. Here it occurs 315 times in 296 verses. We're talking almost 600 times righteous and righteousness are mentioned. And they're the same thing 
Genesis 15, 6. And he believed in the father and he accounted it. The father accounted it to that man for righteousness. So for the sake of keeping this short, let's jump to Romans chapter 3. We're in all these religious organizations love to take this one part. There is none righteous. No, not one. We're in had they read the entirety of the chapter. This is the Father's judgment defended. Romans 3.1 What advantage then has the Hebrew, or what is the profit of the circumcision? Much in every way. Chiefly because to them, those who have the circumcision, were committed the oracles of the Father. So when a person is circumcised to eat the Passover, or they're circumcised on the eighth day, having their children do so, it's because to them were committed the oracles of the Father. Meaning, if you're uncircumcised, you do not have committed to you the oracles of the Father, and therefore you are lacking. Verse 3, for what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief, the atheists, the Catholics, the Christians, Islam, Buddhists, Harry Christians, all the religious organizations out there, will your unbelief make the faithfulness of the Father without effect? Oh, certainly not. Indeed, let the Father be true, but every man a liar, and then... Tertius here, the person who wrote the book of Romans, sums up what he's speaking of. And this is written in Psalms 51 verse 4, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. So we should be humble enough to come before our king, knowing that we could be incorrect in the things that we say and do. And if we find in the scriptures that we are incorrect, don't run and hide. Repent of them and don't do it again. And that's why Tertius brought that up about, certainly not indeed, let the father be true, but every man a liar as it is written, right here as you just seen. Verse 5, but if our unrighteousness, our lawlessness, demonstrates the righteousness of the Father, what shall we say? Is the Father unjust who inflicts wrath? I speak as a man. But no, if our unrighteousness is seen by the Son, He does correct us as Hebrews tells us. The book of Hebrews explains that all those who are called out, if they're not tested and tried, if they are not chastised, then they are bastards and not sons or daughters at all. The father is just when he inflicts his wrath. And also, I don't know how it works, but it does. The sins that are done by mankind, our Father ends up using those things sort of like fertilizer through his righteous Son in these last days, who is the carbon copy of the Father. And they turn these unrighteous things over and over until they come out to become righteous. And I'm not saying sins are righteous. What I'm saying is like if somebody threw a stick of dynamite into your claimed mind, And it blew up the entire entrance, but at the same time it blew up the entrance, which was not righteous for that dynamite stick thrower to do. But it ends up that you discover a vein of gold right there from the entrance that was missed. And therefore, the unrighteous act of another turned out to end up being, hopefully, a blessing in the end. I hope that makes sense to you. Verse 6. Certainly not, for then how will the Father judge the world? For if the truth, the every living word of the Father, has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I also still judged as a sinner? 
See, these people were accusing the disciples and the true believers of being liars, of breaking our Father's laws, when it was actually the priests, the Pharisees, the scribes, made them all sad, you see. They were the ones that added from the Talmud the traditions of men to our Heavenly Father's laws, and because the disciples refused to do traditions, as Messiah taught not to, they were considered sinners. Verse 8, And why not say, let us do evil that righteousness may come? And you see this in the religious organizations today. They say that Jesus did it all for you. Oh, you cannot stop sinning. Oh, you cannot become perfect. Oh, you cannot be righteous. There's only one who's righteous, and that's the Father. And yes, in a sense, that is true. The Father is the one that created righteousness, and no one else can be righteous unless they obey Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. It will be righteousness to you. Just like if you go to a store and you're cold and you see a jacket, it will be a jacket for you if you pay the clerk for it. And in the same way, Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 says it will be righteousness for you and me too if we keep and live by his every living word. And why not say, let us do evil that righteousness may come? As we are slanderously reported and as some affirm that we say, their condemnation is just. Verse 9, what then? Are we better than they? Well, not at all. For we have previously charged both the Hebrews and the Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And you can read these in Psalms 14, 1 through 3, 53, verses 1 through 3, and Ecclesiastes 7, 20 that will expound on this same principle that's being taught. As it is written, they're all under sin because they're not keeping the law. And yes, there is none righteous. No, not one. Not unless you put on our Father's righteousness. He's the only one that has righteousness, but he wants all to put on his righteousness, to never sin again. And it says, there is none who understands, there is none who seeks after the Father. Well, consider this, my friends. Here you got Tertius writing these things, and yet he understands the scriptures. He's not speaking of the true believers here. He's speaking of both the Hebrews and the Greeks who do not understand the truth. There is none righteous of the Hebrews or the Greeks that are eating pork chops and breaking the Sabbaths and not sticking to the every living word, but adding things to it like, oh, you got to wash your hands three times before you eat bread. Tertius is saying that there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands, there is none who seeks after the Father, they have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does righteousness, no, not one. He's not speaking of Messiah, who already laid his life down and took it back up again. Being the carbon copy of the Father, Messiah was certainly righteous. He certainly did righteous things. He did not ever turn aside. He's speaking of the sinning nations, my friends. Verse 13, their throat is an open tomb. This is what Messiah taught Tertius through his disciples, was it doesn't matter what goes in the mouth, speaking food and not abominations. But it's what comes out of the mouth, through the throat. The words telling you that, oh, you can't be righteous. Don't keep them old laws now. Their throat is an open tomb. 
Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 tells you, if they don't come speaking of the law and the testimony of the Messiah, the prophets, the every living word of our Father, don't listen to them. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of the Father in their heart or before their eyes. Now he finishes speaking up about the non-believers, and then he says in verse 19 of Romans 3, now we know, he's speaking to his brothers here now, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before the Father. Now these who are under the law, my friends, it says to those who are under the law, it's like everyone that's in prison that was actually guilty. I'm not talking to the innocent ones put there. I'm talking of the ones that were found guilty and put into prison. They are under the law. They have been judged by the law of man. They broke the laws of man and also most likely the laws of our father too. However, they have come under this law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before the Father. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. And this is what Paul had been speaking of, my friends, is that he had kept the laws as it was taught by the priests. His daddy was a Pharisee. He was brought up under the Talmud and did not adhere, though he thought he was. But after the scales fell from his eye, he saw that this law he had been breaking. If you break the laws, you're condemned, my friends. If you practice doing so, you are condemned. Paul thought he had salvation, but then he realized he didn't even understand what covetousness was until he saw it in the law. And then he repented and told people about it and people hold it against him. Verse 21, But now the righteousness of the Father, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And this righteousness of the Father, again, Deuteronomy 6, verse 25, if you live by the every living word, you will be putting on our Heavenly Father's righteousness. He created righteousness. He is the sole proprietor of all righteousness. Here you can see in 1 Yachanan, or John 2, verse 29, if you know that He, the Messiah, is righteous, well, now it isn't just the Father, is it? You know that everyone who practices keeping the every living word is what? Born of him. And you got every lion, religious organization out there telling you that they are born again. But none of them practices this righteousness and it even says in 1 Yachanan 3, verse 7, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And also, that's why you see here in Luke chapter 18, verse 18, Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Righteous teacher, what shall I do to inherit life? So Yahshua said to him, why do you call me righteous? No one is righteous but one that is the Father. Can you understand what Messiah is actually saying here, my friends? That all righteousness comes from the Father, 
But you can acquire righteousness, and you must acquire righteousness if you want to inherit the kingdom. Messiah furthered, saying, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And the young man says, all these things I have kept from my youth. So when Messiah heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven and come. Now get this. This fellow is given the opportunity. And so many people think that they know my king today, though they can't pass the spiritual test of First Jochanan or John, First John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. These people cannot even pass that test, and they think that they know the Jesus, and that they know the gods and the lords that they are worshiping as well, even better than this young fella here, which many ridicule. However, this fella was given an opportunity to walk with my king, sell it all, give it away, and come follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And my king always spoke in parables, and things came about to where he was able to promote the teachings of our father, to bring forth lessons for us if you just read them, my friends. And then the Messiah saw that he became very sorrowful. He said, Messiah that is, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of the Father. Well, I hope you feel much more scholarly now that you understand that where it talked about none being righteous was not speaking of our Father's children. We are to become holy, just like it tells you in Deuteronomy 14, Leviticus chapter 11, for the clean and unclean laws, where our Father commands us to be holy because He is holy. And we're to be a peculiar people to him. And anybody can be a Hebrew, my friends. All who learn to believe and do as they're instructed become children of the Heavenly Father. Brothers to my King. And that's why I felt so much in need to bring this to you so that you can become his brother as well. And he can teach you. As I said, I'm no babysitter. I want no followers. I want you to know the truth. So that you can also come out of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Where the entire earth is held captive today. The only ones that are not held captive, my friends. Years after Messiah's death and resurrection. Years and years later. Some say over 50 years later. Yachanan or John wrote for all believers to know how to know him. Him, as in the Heavenly Father, and now the righteous Son who's been given all things by the Heavenly Father, who has a Hebrew name, and Hebrew names don't have the letter J in them, my friends. And there's only one name that can be called upon. And though there's several derivatives of Yahshua, you got Yeshua and Yehoshua, Yehushua, and whatever. It's a name that our king gives to you at the time that he's calling you out and you find out there is a name and it strikes you where you understand and you know it's the name that you will never turn from. And even though I call him Yahshua and you might call him Yeshua, well, if you're going to keep the laws and I'm going to keep the laws and you were shown Yeshua and I was shown Yahshua, should we be at war? Or should we do as was commanded also by Yachanan, who did pass the test, just as Messiah did. He showed people how to know him. He said he knew the Father. He said, I know him. If I said I did not know him, I would be a liar like you are, because I do know him. He taught the disciples how to know him. And Yachanan, in 1st Yachanan, or 1st John 2, chapter 2, verses 3 through 6, shows you exactly how you can know our Father too. You can know Him and Messiah, who is a carbon copy of the Father. Messiah never taught anybody to sin. Every word the Father had written by Holy Spirit with men. Our Father does not change. 
The pig was not cleansed. I just was led to bring a video about that. There's nobody can refute those words, my friends, because it's written that the words that me and my brothers will bring forth cannot be refuted because it's our king who is leading us to bring forth these words. I don't do this on my own. I'm not making any money from this, my friends. And people hate me because of it. I'm called names. I'm ridiculed because I love you. Remember that second Yachanan or second John, the same man that told you how to know him is by keeping the commandments, also told you this love that our Messiah told us all that we must keep, even the Jesus said, to love one another. And the love he's talking about shouldn't have you looking in your wallet for a little packet, but you should understand what 2 John, there's only one chapter in it, so if you're going to punch it into a search, put down 2 John 1 verse 6. And it says, for this is love, that we keep the commandments. If you love me, you're not going to steal from me. You're not going to lie about me or to me. And you're going to come out of Revelation 12, verse 9, and be strong about it if you desire life. My king said, if you want life, keep the commandments. Don't listen to those out there telling you that the Jesus cleansed the pig. There was no such thing done. Please watch some of these other videos. Know that I do love you all. I'm praying for you always. I want no followers. I want no money. I just want you to know the truth. Bye.